Hello, hello. My name is April Malone with Yes, I Work From Home, and this is the podcast. Today I have Sabrina St. Peter, and you're going to have to tell us all about your bookkeeping business. It's smart, 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 <laughs> smart, <It's a> mouthful. spark, <laughs> business solutions. You take it away. Yes, April, thanks so much for having me. It was so great to connect with you. I'm excited to chat today. So Smart Spark Business Solutions is a bookkeeping firm and we work solely with service-based professionals. We love to work with people who are, we call them creative marketers, and that could mean anything. It could be public relations agencies. It could be event marketing agencies, podcasters, influencers, content creators. We love working with anyone who uses their brain on the creative side of things to market to others, and we will keep your finances organized. So it's myself, and I have another employee and a virtual assistant that we work with. So you don't really work with people that have a ton of physical products, it's more of the service-based things. Correct. So with our done-for-you services, we work with service-based entrepreneurs or businesses. However, we do, and I've been terrible at it lately, but when we do make content, we try to keep it as general as possible and more high level. So a lot of times things that we are teaching people have to do with service-based businesses, but also would have to do with a product-based business or even restaurants as well. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about your journey and how you came to here. So your business owner, um, yes. do you also do the, the accounting component as well or the bookkeeping I, component? I do. I do. So, you know, that's a hard thing with being a business owner is trying to let go a little bit, but Christina, who is our account supervisor and essentially the head bookkeeper does a fantastic job and has so much more experience, honestly, than I do in bookkeeping. But what I like to do is I like to do the more high level, hey, this is what your numbers are telling you. Now, where or how I got here is a little bit of a zigzag. I think a lot of times people have known me for a long time are like, wait, how did that happen? So I used to work uh, in customer success for about 13 years, and that looked a lot of different ways. I worked at the Four Seasons here in Chicago for six years, went to school for hospitality business, and realized quickly as much as planning beautiful weddings is fun, it's exhausting, and not where my interests lied. Uh, so so I then went and worked in event marketing and worked for a popular business journal here in Chicago and eventually worked for a bunch of SaaS companies. The last company I was working for integrated with QuickBooks Online, which meant I was fielding so many bookkeeping questions to small businesses. At that same time, I was learning that it was time to not work for anyone else. Working in technology is uh, a roller coaster. You learn a lot, things change a lot, but truly your livelihood depends on if the big wigs at the company are ready to take a deal that is presented to them. And if they're not, sometimes that means your friends are being let go and you feel uneasy at your job. So the job I was at, I was at, on a very small team of 25 people, uh, most of which were in Lithuania. So it was almost like we were working remotely, even though we were each in our own little offices and they were being purchased. And I told myself, Hey, if I don't like who buys this company, I am going to leave. And lo and behold, it wasn't a company I would have applied to. Uh, so I decided it was time and I gave them plenty of notice. I gave them five week notice because I was just going to work for myself. I'd already started my business about a month before I gave my notice. And my last official day at that job was February 28th, 2020. <laughs> and we all know what happened after that. So here in Chicago, things started shutting down, I think officially on the 18th of March. Um, St. Patrick's Day is huge here. Um, so I think everyone still had their big parties and then everything shut down. I had so many networking events. I was ready like, oh, I can tell people out loud now about my business. I'm not hiding it from my employer. And all the networking events were canceled. And it was a little scary to be honest, but I wouldn't have it any other way because I got to do the pandemic my way, which meant a lot of freaking out, a lot of napping, but I didn't have to answer to anybody. Um, 
And I, I, like I said, I got to do it my own way. I'm curious if all the shutdowns, I know that you didn't get to have your marketing that you wanted and the networking, Mm -hmm. but did it catapult things as far as like people needing um, someone helping with their bookkeeping remotely? Yes. And I also think I got creative with marketing. So as people might know, the government did come through eventually with aid for small businesses, but in order to be able to get the aid, you had to have your books in order. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of people out there who were, I would say, um, taking advantage of this fact and charging lots of money um, and calling themselves experts in (laughs) the PPP loan or the idle loan and whatnot. And honestly, anyone who says they're an expert or were at that time in PPP loans, no one could be an expert. It was brand new to all of us. Idle loans is a different story. So what I took upon myself, I didn't have many clients at that time. So I just, I poured over the CARES Act, finding out what needed to happen for people to apply. And I actually was doing some pro bono, just consulting for people saying, hey, tell me about your business. What would you use the money on if you got it? And then suggest to them, okay, well, here are the two options. You can go down this path or go down this path, or you could do both paths in some situations. So that's the way I felt good in helping people, but also it got my name out there a little bit. I did get one client from there because she actually was shutting down her business even before COVID happened. She was a little coffee shop at the time. And Um, at that time we were working with literally anyone, Mm -hmm. uh, and she had planned on shutting down her coffee shop, which was truly an institution in the town that she worked in. And I had helped her figure out what she wanted to do, um, for loans. And she said, can you just, you know, shut down the books for me? So it worked out in the end, you know, you're nice to people or you just give and people will come back around. And so you got a referral from her or was she able I got to business from her? Good. She, so she wanted, you know, it's one of those things. I think a lot of small business owners just get exhausted at certain points. And then when something like the pandemic happened, some people just either they made the decision, like, I'm not going to try to even get yeah. through this mm-hmm. or unfortunately a decision was made for them, which is yeah. also sad. Yeah. Um, but so she was able to right off into the sunset. Okay. Do what she wanted to do. Good. So, uh, Chicago, um, did you guys have the big lockdowns too? Big time. Did that affect like your work from home plan? I would say yes. I don't, you know, I don't know if I would say it was big time, but I was in my condo a lot. Um, you know, there was masks everywhere for the first, probably up until summertime, we were, we were all just staying away from each other. And even then in the summertime, they actually closed our parks down uh, near the lake. So in Chicago, we're right on the lake and there's just huge parks right before you get to the lake. They weren't even letting, letting us to go in there. Um, so to go for a walk. Right. Like I found these random parks that were like inland a little bit that, you know, I walked by every day, but I never like put together like, oh, this is a park I would go sit in because it was in between two buildings. Uh But but I was like, okay, I could go sit in this park instead of that park. But so there was a pretty big shutdown, but what changed the most is part of the reason I wanted to work from home and work for myself is, well, I should say part of the reason I wanted to work for myself is so I could work from home. And obviously jokes on me, everyone got to work from home, but the reason I wanted to work from home is so I could travel. Okay. And that, obviously that plan was spoiled. I was not getting on any airplanes. I don't think I went anywhere in 2020 and t- until the summertime maybe. And that was to drive up North. Um, and literally I remember I walked out onto the dock at my friend's home. These are friends I've known for, since I was 16 years old. And I just walked out and I was like, oh, it's so nice to feel the wind on my face. And they like kind of looked at me. I was like, I wear a mask everywhere I go in Chicago. Like anytime I'm outside, I had a mask on because that's what we thought at the time, Mm -hmm. what you were supposed to do. And in Michigan, it was a different story. And also, you know, 
they drove cars. I, I didn't really drive cars when I was here. So yeah. it was just a different situation. And it was, just, it was so nice to be able to get away. But other than that, as much as I love going up North to Michigan, that was not the plan. The plan was to go to Mexico and just go all around the country and see friends in different cities. But that plan is now going to be put into place this fall, which is nice. Good. Have you been able to do a little bit, a little bit of that in the last five or six months? I was. So I uh, was lucky enough to go and dog sit for one of my friends who was living on uh, the island of Anguilla um, in March. So I got to do that for three weeks, which totally reinvigorated like my travel bug and hey, this is still possible. And it was so nice because first and foremost, the reason they needed someone is they needed to go visit their family off of the island, but they had just gotten this new dog. And even before they got the dog, they were like, okay, well, can you come down if we get the dog? And I said, yeah, sure. And I had already planned that I was going to go to Mexico city in March. I said, well, I was already planning on going someplace else, but this is free, free place to stay in a beautiful Island where I probably really would not have gone to already. And so my friend works from home who lived there and she had the whole setup and I was able to work my normal hours and still go and explore and enjoy and get a tan. Are they also East coast time for you? So that Island is in Atlantic. I think it's called Atlantic standard time. It's one hour hour earlier than Eastern, Mm -hmm. but then they don't recognize kind of like in Arizona, they don't recognize whatever the thing that happens in March. So daylight Mm -hmm. savings time or whatever the daylight standard time is. Mm -hmm. So right now they're on Eastern time. So it wasn't too far off at all. That's so fun. And, uh, you kept your same hours. You worked from home from her desk and walked the dog and it was paradise. Mm -hmm. It was paradise. And you know what their dog, actually, they had a large yard. Their dog was not a dog that likes to go on walks. I had to like teach it to go on walks. So honestly, it just ran around. I just hung out with the dog, got to go to the beach. They lived literally, you could see the Caribbean from their their patio. I took a five minute walk to get down there. There's delicious restaurants in Anguilla. So I got to try them all, listen to good music, try to go on some adventures, had a car to go around. So it was paradise. Wow. Does it make you want to be a digital nomad? It does. And you know, I have joined an organization called Outsight. I have not stayed at any of their locations, but I'm excited to potentially do that this fall. And I also have joined an organization, Trusted House Sitters, because I do dog sit a lot. uh, I'm just taking my dog sitting on the road, essentially. So with Trusted House Sitters, you can basically trade dog sitting or house sitting services for a place to stay. And It's almost like you can treat it like Airbnb, where you can see all these beautiful homes that people are offering up and their animals. Sometimes there's no animals. Sometimes they just want someone to water their garden and you can go. So I'm going to New York for about 10 days at the end of September, early October um, for my first trial of that. I'm going to watch two dogs and a cat in Brooklyn. Um, So I'm excited to try that out. And I also, you have to apply to each one, right? Because you're going to a stranger's home, they get to pick who gets to stay at their home. I also applied for a time in Puerto Rico because I wanted to go to Puerto Rico in mid-November I've been and there. something popped up. So we'll see if that works out. And then with, I was, I was there in a November. It was lovely. Yeah. Well, it's like right after hurricane season, hopefully, you know, everything passes them this time around because they've had some rough goes at it. Yeah. Um, but Hopefully it'll be a good time to go. And then the other organization outside, which I'm very excited about is, you know, I describe it and they probably hate someone describing it like this, but it's almost like super upgraded hostels that are not okay. cheap. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's not cheap at all, but uh, you have to be a member and you can get like a lifetime membership for a few hundred dollars. Um, but everyone's background checked. And most of the time people are digital nomads of such. So m- most of the time these are in mansions 
that investors are renting to this organization. So there's, everyone can have their individual room. You have a private bathroom for the most part. I think there's some times where you can choose to have a shared bathroom, but they're very, you know, Instagram aesthetic, very light, airy. They have the high sp speed Wi-Fi. But the thing that's most exciting to me is they have um, a community manager at each location. So number one, as a solo traveler who's female, like I want someone to know, like Sabrina's supposed to be here. Oh yeah. And if she's yeah. not back here, like let's let's worry about that. But right. also, uh, they'll put you in a WhatsApp group with everyone else that is at the location. So you have kind of a built-in network of people there that you can hang out with. And they might also be American, but they might be European. They might yeah. be from South America. They could be from anywhere. Let's go so get drinks that's exciting. kind of thing. Yeah. Let's go get drinks or just, Hey, like, what do you do that? You can be a digital nomad. Right. And so it sounds kind of like a glorified bed and breakfast, old school mm -hmm. bed and breakfast with, um, someone at the house to take care of you. Do they, do you have to pay for food or do you make your own or is it a shared kitchen? So my understanding is there's a shared kitchen in some of the locations. And I think this is based on where, where you are, you are required to book for at least 30 days. Okay. Yeah. So Again, it's in that way where it's like some places you can you can do three days, but some places because of local laws yep. and what their probably business license says, Short you have to be a 30 or rental. More. Yeah. I know exactly. like our HOA doesn't allow like short-term rentals, but longer term mm -hmm. rentals are a gray area. So exactly. I can, yeah. I can see exactly why that happens. Are exactly. they all over the world then too? I would say yes. Um, they have created a bunch of locations recently in Portugal. I have a feeling that's like a digital nomad hotspot because mm. everywhere, I feel like Portugal's everywhere now. So they have, I think like four or five places in Portugal all around the country. There's a few in the US, like one's in New York, a few in Denver, a few in LA, San Francisco. I think Austin has one. Uh, there's one in Puerto Rico. Uh, and they have a few in Asia and like Bali, the typical digital nomad spots and a few in Costa Rica and Mexico city. That sounds cool. I've heard of a few different kinds of, uh, digital nomad, nomad, um, setups like that where, you know, where everyone has like the business center slash super fast, high, you know, high speed internet, mm -hmm. um, and the community built in where basically everyone kind of has the same lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I can see there being benefits and maybe a few cons to that. Like you really still want to get to know the the local land too, but sounds like this Absolutely. one kind of has like a concierge built in as well, well. And from what I can see, again, I have not done this yet. I'll do my it the first time this fall, but from what I can see, the people who are the community managers are local. You know, they're not Americans that are transplanted into Mexico city. So that's, feels a lot better than like, you know, if I was down there trying to teach someone about Mexico city, because I don't really know much about Mexico city yet. Yep. Um, but yes, I think that's something that's really important to me too, is I don't, having worked at the four seasons, there was plenty of times where I went away and I stayed at the hotel because I was by myself and I knew I was safe at the hotel because mm -hmm. they're not going to let a fellow employee, <laughs> like something happen to them. Um, now that I am outside of those walls, if you will, I'm like, I, I want to go learn about more and I don't want to go to the all-inclusive, although there are times and places for that. I want to go in and meet the locals and eat the good food. And maybe it's not the food that's on the best restaurant list. Maybe it's the hole in the wall mom and pop shop. Yeah. When I did a lot of traveling, we often stayed with locals or were fed by locals and it, and it, and we never really were in the resorts. Like I think a few times we were on a beach and we kind of stumbled into the resort area and we were like, yep, this is fancy, but it was nice to, to get to see, you know, the other side and, mm -hmm. you know, we felt safe in groups. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you're traveling with other people or in a group with, that, you know, let's, let's go out together for a day trip that sounds mm -hmm. safer. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Sounds like a great adventure ahead of you. Um, so is there any point where you would actually get paid for house sitting or is it just like a free space to stay? So on trusted house sitters, no, but 
I follow a few people on TikTok and Instagram that are on trusted house sitters, but I think they also make a, a living off of it. So I'm sure there are people out in the world who have a website and say, Hey, I'll come to your home, but you have to pay for my flight and X dollars per day. Uh, that's not me at this point because mm-hmm. I've dog sat for it's almost eight years now. I do feel like I have a little bit of a leg up if I wanted to do that eventually, because I have over a hundred reviews of people saying like, Hey, I've dropped my dog off at her house and the dog was happy or she stayed at my home and everything was good and clean when I came back and the dog was still alive and happy. (laughs) So you're dog seating right now. I am. And April, as you know, I had to, I'm dog sitting for a neighbor who lives in my building. And luckily I was able to put the dog upstairs um, in his own home while we are recording because he's a little vocal uh, because we do live in a condo building. And anytime he hears someone out in the hallway, he likes to talk to them. <laughs> That's what you meant by putting him in his unit. Cause I was like, do yes. you-, you were like, you mean a crate? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, is there another name for that now? <laughs> so, so that makes sense. So he's just yep. having a little day trip to his own house for a minute. And then exactly. And that's, you know, I watched two of the dogs in the building. So it's always, that's nice, but usually I don't have that option. So I do have to plan better and know, Hey, if I'm going to record a podcast or I'm going to have a really important meeting, I need to either do it on a time where I don't have a dog that's barky. Mm -hmm. Some of the dogs are, some of them aren't right. Mm -hmm. Some of them are deaf and they can't hear. And that's actually a pretty good dog to have in a building. (laughs) Um, But either I have to do that or I have to go out. So I had a meeting it was a pitch call. So I actually met this person during the pandemic. I had hosted networking events on zoom for the small business community in Chicago. And I was able to meet so many people that way, which is fantastic. And one of these people I met owns a business here in Chicago that is totally online as well. I think they are also work from homers. And I had had a call with him to talk about bookkeeping and the dog I had was I didn't realize how barky they were going to be when I was on the call. And it was very embarrassing. And I ended up not landing that piece of business. And I don't think it was the dog's fault by any means. He ended up going with someone else, but then he came back around about a year later. And for whatever reason, it didn't work out with the other bookkeeper and they were looking again. You better believe I went and found a co-working space up the street. Uh, I'm not gonna <laughs> because make that I mistake. was like, I'm not gonna make that mistake again. And now we still didn't get that piece of business. They went a different way. Um, but at least I know yeah. it wasn't because of the barking. <laughs> so do you actually have any of your own pets right now? I do not. I don't. So part of the reason I don't is because I want to be able to travel and not worry about where does, where does my pet go? I'm not allowed to do trusted house sitters. I don't think in my condo because they have the HOA rules of if you're renting out your place, it has to be for 12 months or more. Now, maybe because it's technically money's not being exchanged. Maybe I could get around that. Uh, but right now I have so like, even thinking of becoming a digital nomad for a year next year and renting out my place for a year, I think to myself, okay, well, like who are the OG dogs that I don't want to let down and that I would come back and dog sit at their house. That's even hard Hmm. to make a short list (laughs) because, you know, some of the dogs I've watched for eight years and fortunately they are getting up in age. Um, so, you know, I had the conversations with their parents being like, Hey, you know, I might rent my place out. If so, can I watch your dog at your place? And literally so they're like, this dog's 15. I don't know. And I was like, you know, it's sad, but just those things where it's like, eventually I'm just going to need to wean down my clients because some of the dogs I watch, I should say most of the dogs I watch are, there's a reason they come to someone's home instead of going to doggy daycare. Okay. And yep. that's because they are, maybe they're reactive um, maybe uh, mostly maybe they're reactive or they have anxiety or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I have one dog who is the sweetest dog and I love watching him, but 
even sometimes when I, I've watched him four times now, sometimes I just have to ignore him for the first hour and he has to warm up. And when he's ready, he'll come to me. But his owner's like, I don't, you're like the only one that he trusts. I'm like, I don't want to abandon you. <laughs> You know, I actually did interview another person who was a full-time student and did doggy daycare and also pet training. Um, Mm -hmm. And I should look and see, I'm trying to remember which episode she was. I probably could find it in a minute. Um, But, you know, because she has many of her own pets, it Mm -hmm. restricts her. It was... um, episode 69 willow aldridge and she is actually local to me and she does pet care as a 24 7 job at home um and so she was having overnights and um and early morning you know 5 a.m drop-offs and things like that but it restricts from you know it restricts her ability to travel every once in a Mm -hmm. while she would be able to take one of her doggy daycare kiddos if you will <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with her you know up to the mountains or something like that but it really mm-hmm. depended on which you know set of animals she had that week or whatever right um so right. your plan you still get your fix with animals but you have freedom mm-hmm. for travel exactly and you know like I said with this whole oh could I travel for a year idea I I did choose you know my VIP saying like hey these are my six or seven dogs that I would come back to Chicago for, because listen, I have friends here. I still want to see my Mm -hmm. mom lives here. Um, so I don't plan on being gone for a whole year, but I'm just Mm -hmm. not going to be at my place. Oh, so like you could kind of bunk with one of your locals and then still let your condo be rented sublet or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. So you'd have a home. I would say of that list, I think 75% of them, I already go to their home. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even have to talk to them about it. There were only two that I had to say, Hey, this, this might happen. And they're like, great. Sounds like a solid plan for you. (laughs) Yeah. I'm excited. Would you keep all of your belongings in your apartment then and have a furnished? You know, I have to talk to my realtor about that. Uh, I'm assuming no, but if for some reason that's going to be attractive to someone, great. Um, otherwise I would, I already asked my dad, I'm like, dad, can I put all my stuff at your house? Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, sure. Why not? And I was like, all right, well, well, we'll have to make room. Cause you have a lot of stuff there. I mean, if he's got like a garage <laughs> or something, that's better than, yeah. <laughs> you know, having to rent a storage unit. Right. And also, you know, I think everyone probably goes through this. There's a point where I've lived in my place for seven years and some mm-hmm. of the things in here, I'm like, yes, that was great. And I wanted it then, but I'm like, I would love a total refresh. So it just might be time to re-gift the couch I have or sell the couch I have to someone who might like it. And then when it's time, just buy now. Right. But a furnished apartment or condo would, might be attractive to people who are coming international, you know, coming from another country or student Mm -hmm. or, you know, just a temporary living situation. Exactly. Like, and what, I'm right by the lake. So, and right by Wrigley field. So man, like, something will happen. <laughs> I've been to Chicago. That's I've been around those apartments. Some of them are pretty tall. Yeah. They are, they are. And I'm actually at this corner. I'm looking out the window. It's so windy, but it's just like, because we're right by two tall buildings. It's just like a wind tunnel. Mm-hmm. I remember being there on like the windiest day of the year. And my mm-hmm. ponytail was just like cutting my face (laughs) the hair was just like whipping my skin and I was like wow that's intense yes 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 it is it is fast here I saw you two and and Regina Spector I I was for um my birthday weekend and my best friend from Minnesota and I met in the middle in Chicago because I was living in Missouri at the time I think and Mm -hmm. that was a really good weekend and was it at Wrigley Field Mm, I think yeah Mm -hmm. packed sold out that's cool yeah. yeah. Regina cool. Spector was at one of the smaller venues, but yeah, it's also packed. Awesome. So I don't know if anybody even knows who Regina Spector is anymore. <laughs> I've heard of that in my head and I, this could be totally wrong, but in my head, when I hear Regina Spector, Amy Winehouse comes up in my brain and I don't know if they have any look, anything alike or sound alike, but <laughs> they both play. I don't know about Amy. Cause I, um, I'm kind of old now and I have like, it's like my musical taste was cool. Like 15 years ago before I got married and had kids. And now I just listen to kids music most of the time. Fair enough. Fair enough. Or whatever I listened to 15 years ago. I still, yeah. I was no um, Regina Spector kids, Bob. 
<laughs> yes. Cause Regina Spector isn't kid appropriate. So yeah. <laughs> shoot. Anyway, <laughs> um, what would you miss about working from home in Chicago? If you're going abroad? Honestly, and I will praise all the tools that I have <laughs> until the day I die, but I have a, I have a nice setup. It took me a little bit to, I think, figure out the best way to work from home, right? To have a dedicated space. I used to, right now I'm sitting at my dining room table and I say dining room, it shares the space with the living room Mm -hmm. (laughs) because city living, but I take my, all my meetings from here because I have giant windows in front of me and the light's great. Yep. But I also have a dedicated workspace that this was a COVID project. Literally, I think at 8 PM at night on a Saturday, a light bulb went off in my head. And I was like, wait, I have a desk I don't use. And I think it fits in my hall closet. And so my desk is like, just fits right in my hall closet where my coats used to go. Mm -hmm. And I have a chair that tucks right in, but I have a whole setup there and it's my dedicated space. Now I don't have to worry about my second screen being on my dining room table when I want to eat. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I, you know, I have my laptop stand. I have a second screen that's pretty large, which is pretty important when you're working with a bunch of bank statements and things like that. I have a separate keyboard. I have a mouse. It's like, I'm at an office. Mm -hmm. It's just in my closet. And then Uh, can you close the door? I can close the door. I, I would say the only thing I don't like about it is So all my windows are on one wall. So there's not a ton of light that gets over there, even though I can still see outside. Um, I mean, if I had my way, I would just like renovate the whole closet. So it would actually look like a built-in desk and Mm -hmm. that might happen one day. Uh, But having that second screen is key. So I recently, maybe not even so recently, maybe about a year ago, bought a travel second screen, which it's called a sidetrack. it basically connects magnetically to my laptop. So it connects with magnets and it just folds out and folds in. It's just nice to have a second screen like that when you're traveling or when you're just, again, when I went to that co-working space, I had it. So I don't feel as stunted, you know, sometimes when you're at a coffee shop, if you're at a coffee shop with your laptop and you're just hunched over, that's nice when you're doing emails, but having that second screen is key. Uh, how thin is it? I would say, actually, one sec, because we have a video. Is it in here? This is what it looks like. Oh, wow. So, so it's, it's like about the thickness. Half an inch. Mm-hmm. It's about the thickness of my, my MacBook, probably. Yeah. And so this is with the magnet. The magnet is um, folded down. So it obviously goes just like that. Interesting. And you're Uh, not going to like wipe out your hard drive or anything with magnets? No, nope. I guess not because they sell a lot of them, I think. Um, But I would say that's one of the best investments I made for my business. So it just connects to the metal on the back of your existing laptop? They send it with like a little piece. So it's like a what four by two inch kind of command strip magnet piece that you put on and they give you like a template. So you put it on the right spot and all that stuff, but they have others that are just stands. I mean, people use, I think people use iPads too, sometimes as a second screen. If you have a Mac, there's some way that you can do that. I can see that being possible because they integrate so well. Exactly. Giving me ideas. My, (laughs) uh, our iPad that we've had is the same age as my 10 year old son. So I'm not sure how compatible that would be, but, yes. um, so when you traveled to the Island, Mm -hmm. um, what did you bring with you? Somehow I fit everything into a carry on and a like tote bag, which I was very proud of. But when you were going someplace warm, you don't have bulky sweaters and all that jazz. Uh, so, um, for work, honestly, I had my laptop. I had that second screen. I have, um, like a little pouch that is not in my bag, right? That's right next to me, <laughs> but it's like a little old, you know, when you go to like, you used to go to the clinic counter and you would get like the pack and they yes. would give you like the little things. I have lots of those bags. Yeah. So I put like pens and I have a little calculator. Cause sometimes I just want to calculate something not on my phone. Obviously I need to calculate stuff sometimes. So that goes in there and my iPad, my iPad mini, which I take notes on. Other than that, work-wise, 
it's all I brought. That's awesome. Yeah. And then you use digital tools to help you track your time and tell me about that. So yes, yes, we do. So I do not track my time for billing for clients because we are on retainers. So Mm -hmm. just based on the work that we know we have to do. Uh, But that doesn't mean that I don't track my time to see if I'm charging correctly. So I use toggle and sometimes, um, so we have a system called keeper that we use for project management for the bookkeeping production side of our business. And there's a time tracker in there as well. So Christina uses a combination of both of those. Honestly, when it comes to time tracking, I find it awful to time track. And I think I'm not alone in that. So I, even with Christina, who is my, um, our associate or sorry, account supervisor. I tell her, I'm like, track your time however you want, because she is hourly. It's like, as long as it eventually gets into keeper, I'm cool with it. Yeah. That's basically how I roll with our, um, with my virtual assistant. It's like, yeah, we have a set number of hours we're aiming for every week, but we can give Mm -hmm. and take a little bit. You know, if you're, if you need to take a day off, just give me a day later someday, Mm -hmm. you know, just as long as you know what the balance is, like if you're plus four hours or minus four hours, it'll work out. And I exactly want to, you know, we're both happier if, you know, we have that flexibility. Exactly. And right now, both my, the people I work with, my employee and my virtual assistant are part-time. So I'm not going to sit here and say, you have to work these four hours every day. I don't care. Like, unless we have a meeting that we have scheduled with a client or Uh each other, work whenever you want. And it works out because everyone's in different parts of their life. I don't have children right now. Some of the people I work with do, Uh they have to do camp drop-offs or all of a sudden because of COVID camp got canceled because they don't have enough teachers, like (laughs) all these things. And honestly, as much as I do care because I want to have good relationships with the people I work with, I don't care. (laughs) <laughs> like just when you don't have to check in with me when things like that happen. I almost feel like people that came from like a corporate situation or the hourly like time in, you know, time out situation are just more willing to be flexible right now. Mm-hmm. Um, is that what you came from? Yes. You know what? Are I think salaried? and I, I, I was salaried except when I was at the hotel, when I first started at the hotel, I was hourly. And there were times, let me tell you, April, where literally we were not allowed to clock in early because they wanted, they were like, you know, Sabrina is supposed to work X number of hours a day and that's it. And if I happened to clock in like 10 minutes early, somehow that like pushed the whole hotel over <laughs> like I know, right? hours. And I'm like, I literally make not a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I don't meet make the least amount of money because of what my role was, but I'm making hourly money. It's, mm-hmm. it's fine. Uh, but I think of where I struggled a lot was I'm such a rule follower, which I guess is great for a bookkeeper, <laughs> but true. I'm such a rule follower. I was never someone until very late in my working for someone else career that would go get a haircut in the middle of the day. Right. Mm -hmm. or um, leave early. Like I was like, oh, I I have to work from this time to this time. And I Mm -hmm. wouldn't even think about leaving. Mm -hmm. And there just came a time where the switch flipped. I was like, what are they going to do? Like, I'm an adult. Yeah. I need to, my hair, my salon is literally two blocks from work. I'm going to go to the salon during the day and I'll just work later. Yeah. It all works out. It all works out. And also at some point you're not working 40 hours a week. I think everyone has dealt with that before, especially when you're salaried. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, if I'm not leaving at five o'clock, I need to deal with my personal life at some point. It says here in your form that you filled out for me that you're working about 50 hours a week. Yes. And I think that that is something that I am. There's two things I would say about that. Number one, I think everyone thinks they're working more than they actually are Hmm. because of just everything that's going on in the day. Um, I've tried over the last probably only seven days, I guess, ignore the weekend, but the last week that the time block and try to be more realistic about what I can get done in a certain amount of time. Cause I'm terrible at that. I think, Oh, I'm going to get through all these emails today and do this and do that and do that you're one person unless you can delegate it. So I will find myself 
I schedule focus mate sessions to try to get certain uh, projects done. Mm -hmm. And this morning, for example, today sales tax is due. And I have three clients that do sales tax. We no longer take on clients that need us to do sales tax for them, but we have these legacy clients and we still help them with this. And I had, I was like, oh, great. I'm just going to get this all done in one 50 minutes focus mate session. Uh, two focus mate sessions later, I'm done with them. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's okay. Well, you are working 50 hours a week, but does it feel like that? Or are you actually, and I think the other hard thing just about being a business owner is I did do it all by myself for a really long time. And a lot of the clients that signed on with me signed on to work with me and they all know I have an employee now. And that's part of the reason why a lot gets done of their actual bookkeeping. But as a bookkeeper, there's a lot that is done that is not bookkeeping. So for example, I'm paying, I pay vendors for one of my biggest clients. I'm the one behind the emails. I'm the one emailing, but my employee, she's the one submitting the payments in our bill pay system. And I just approve it. So it's finding little things like that, that I can offload. Cause honestly, Mm -hmm. sometimes when I'm doing it, I'm like, Oh, I'm just going to go ahead and pop this in the system. No, don't pop it in the system. Ask someone else to do it because you want to give them the hours. You want to work them up to full-time because they want to be full-time, give them the hours. So Mm -hmm. that's a struggle I'm always trying to work through. So that helped me remember what I wanted to say earlier about my husband. Mm -hmm. Um, So one thing I appreciate about his work is even though they do have, you know, salary hours that they're supposed to keep, um, if they have too many hours on their um, device, on their workstation, um, that they have been actively like typing on the computer, it tells them mm-hmm. that they've worked too long and that they need to take a break. And Wait, that's if awesome. And if they've used all of their hours for the day, like if my husband like maybe took a short lunch and it was in the middle of something and didn't stand up and take a break as often as he was supposed to, they're mm-hmm. really concerned about safety there. And sometimes it's three o'clock and he's like, you know, I had an early call this morning and my device is telling me that I've already worked too much for today and I need to stop. So I'm coming home now and I'm like, you know what? I do appreciate that, that they care. And that, you know, when I was teaching, uh, kids and adults in China, um, Mm -hmm. English, I was talking to a lot of these, you know, professionals that they would stay at the office sometimes until 10, 11 o'clock at night, you know, because, um, you know, of that culture of, you know, wanting to show that you're working hard, um, and where my husband's company is kind of the opposite. We're like, you know, we need balance and need safety because the, you know, the longer you sit there at a computer or the more challenges you what you might have physically. I mean, the, when you said that the first thing that came to mind, and I don't remember where this office was located, but I remember reading an article, probably it could have been 10 years ago now about an intern at one of the big he was either a big accounting or consulting firm who was working so much that he passed away. He was working like he was very young, maybe like 22, maybe 23, but he was basically subsisting on Red Bull and like, God knows what he was eating for food. And he was like working until like two or three in the morning in the office. Listen, there have been times where I couldn't sleep and I got on my computer while I was employed by someone else but like in the office and he was unfortunately found in the office. Like how terrible. That and is, I'm sure that company the now, story. Oh, it's no. so sad. And so more companies need to do that. And also that's so interesting that there's a software that does that. And so smart. Yeah. So smart. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say then? Uh, it'll come to me. Yeah. So you, you also wrote that the goal is always to work as little as possible. So I'm assuming you're finding ways to streamline things, but also delegate. Exactly. Well, and uh, having come from software, I know automation is key, but there's that balance, right? So I provide a service to people. People, like if someone signs on to work with me, right now we're actually revamping our entire sales process and onboarding process. And I would like to automate as much as possible. That being said, someone is still paying the minimum someone could pay us is $165 a month, which is 
not nothing, but it's, it's still pretty inexpensive for bookkeeping. The average amount our clients are paying us are almost $400 a month though. So someone's paying you $400 a month. They don't want it all to be automated. They want to talk to a human being. Mm-hmm. So still having that relationship with people and being able to build a relationship, but not automate too much is where I'm trying to figure out where the line is there. Right. Right. I actually interviewed a lady who's an automation expert. If you need oh. a connection, you let me know. Yes. Yes. She's on yeah. Australia it's just so really interesting. Fun. Oh, awesome. Uh, before you went off on your own business, had you, Mm -hmm. and you said you had started a month ahead of time. What was Mm -hmm. that like for you when you were trying to do both? So honestly, I, I would almost say I was the most productive during that time because the world was my oyster, right? I had, and when I say I started a month before I had announced to my inner circle, Hey, I'm doing this. Like I didn't put it on LinkedIn or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, but saying, Hey, I'm doing this. If you know anyone, let me know. Uh, and I had one or two clients come from that and I would be waking up. Like I'm, I used to be much earlier riser than I am now. COVID really ruined that. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But I would be waking up and I would just be so happy and I'd get to work on my computer. And then when I came home, I would, um, you know, work on my computer more. And I just knew like, I'm building something for myself Mm -hmm. and I had the more energy to do that. And still I am building something for myself, but there are times I feel like as a business owner, there are ebbs and flows. There are times where you're like, Ooh, I'm going for it right now. I feel like I'm in one of those phases, but other times where I'm like, Oh my God, I just want to survive and make sure I can pay my bills. Mm -hmm. You know? So when you traveled, were you working super hard or were you working a medium amount? I would say a medium amount. So I happened to get there. I think the first day I was there was the last day of February. So I have to do invoicing on the first day of every month. I have to do it. There's no way around it. And I have my employee help me with that. And she's actually over the last few months t- taken on so much of it. And life is just so much easier. But I remember the first night, my friend, she came, I was staying at a hotel for the first few nights because her family was actually visiting before they left. Okay. And she came and, you know, you have to go through all the COVID p- procedures and everything back then. And we, once I got cleared, we went out to dinner and we went to the bar after and had drinks. And I remember us leaving and mentioning to the, one of the people we were chatting at the bar, I was like, Oh, I have to work tomorrow. And he was like, well, what do you do? And I'm like, I'm not telling you that. Like, <laughs> and he was like, well, clearly you're an accountant or something. I was like, I'm not an accountant, but he said, close. you know, <laughs> yeah, close. But he's, he said, well, what else do you have to do on the first of the month? If it's not invoicing. Oh, smart. <laughs> and I was like, fair, <laughs> but you know, I was able to, so the hotel I was staying at, um, I had a lovely um, porch that overlooked the ocean or the sea, I guess it's called. And I got to do invoicing on the porch and I somehow got a sunburn while doing it. I was like, you know, I'm okay with that. (laughs) It's worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. It's worth it. So especially if it was like March 1st, where it's still blustery and everything up in Chicago. I, after doing this trip, I love the snow. I'm not a huge skier. There was a ski hill in the town I grew up in, but Mm -hmm. I love the snow in the winter when there is snow, when there's no snow, get out of here. Like, I don't want that. And there's no snow here after like the end of February. Okay. I don't need to be here anymore in March. (laughs) I I don't need to be here in March. I grew up in Minnesota and I will say that Christmas snow like is magical but mm-hmm. I'm okay with just a couple of days of snow um, mm-hmm. a year. And, yeah. you know, like I want to see snow, but I don't want to drive in snow. And so if mm-hmm. it could just only snow, but the part that I hate is March and April in Minnesota, because, you know, my name is April. And April's <laughs> supposed to represent spring and flowers and birds yes. and being Twitter pated and all the things, yes. you know, from Bambi. But yes. it's, it's just slushy, dirty, messy, black, gross yes. snow. And I swear it didn't get nice, at least in Chicago this year until maybe end of May, like just rain, rain or dirty snow. That wasn't actually snow. Like 
I don't need it. So yeah, March 1st was great. One time I, um, when I lived in Minnesota, I was asked similar to you, I, it wasn't dog sitting, it was kid sitting. So, um, oh, cool. I had just come back from traveling for four months with a team of people mm-hmm. who went all around the world for a little bit. And, um, one of the people was going to, one of the couples was going to celebrate their 10 year anniversary. I'm like, Hey, can you come watch our five-year-old? Mm-hmm. He really liked you. And none of our families are friends, oh. you know, local are available. We'll fly you down. You can stay at our house and we'll pay you like a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, but you'll have a car to drive and everything. And it was fun. The kid was a hoot. He was really a smart, rambunctious, energetic, hyper kid. Um, yeah. and so it was, I had my hands full for that whole week. Um, but the day that I left, it was 30 below actual Fahrenheit, you know, temperature. Oh my gosh. 30 below and 30 below Celsius is almost the same thing. Yeah. So to anyone who's listening internationally, 30 below is just <laughs> freaking cold. Yes. And when I arrived in Florida that day, it was 70 and they mm-hmm. had a community pool and I went swimming. It was a hundred degree difference. That's um, crazy. And the locals thought I was, you know, like bunkers for crazy. wanting to <laughs> be in the 70 degree weather and get wet. And I was like, you have to understand where I just came from. And it's kind exactly. of the same here in Arizona. Um, we have pools open year round and mm-hmm. sometimes we'll get in them in the winter. Sometimes we won't, but, um, I, I can see being reverse snowboard being okay too, because the, the summers are so brutal. It's nice to think about maybe escaping and going up North and I can see Absolutely. that going both ways. I never really realized that people were going home from Arizona oh. for a reason. Mm-hmm. Now I get it. Yeah. You know, I have a friend who lives in North Carolina. It's not, I don't think nearly as hot as, it is in Arizona right now, but it's probably more extreme, humid though. Yeah. Extremely humid. And she's, you know, complaining of the heat and her family's going up to Canada, uh, for a week and she can't wait yeah. because it's just going to be lovely weather. Yeah. It makes me think now that my kids are a little bit older, it'll be easier to travel with them. Um, my mm-hmm. husband's never left the country and I hope that at some wow. point we will. And he just finished a three weeks. No, it was actually a four week sabbatical. And mm-hmm. we used that, you know, it was after five years, he got one month and we used that to travel for three weeks. And we went to 14 states. That's we saw amazing. every place we've ever lived together with the kids. And, oh. um, actually that we've, yeah, um, we went through 14 states and we saw friends and family for three whole weeks. And then we came home and rested for, um, a week before he had to go back to work. And I'm thinking in five years when he does this again, maybe we can go somewhere even further away. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so exciting. What a great company he works for. I mean, that's the sabbatical, uh, the alerts on the computer. Yeah. Like there's it. a lot of good things. Um, they yeah. are having him be on site now because he was working from home for two years and that was mm-hmm. great. And now they want him on site three days a week, which I, I'm which, sure is a hard transition for everyone. I'm just glad that's again, another thing I'm just glad I don't have to deal with because I have a friend who works for a very large company. A company back in Detroit. And she recently started this job this year. She's never, she's been in the office twice. And she's like, oh, we have to go back to the office in September. I said, like, do you even have a me? desk? I think that it's probably going to be three days a week to start. I was like, first of all, do you even have a desk at the office? <laughs> and second, you know, these companies are saying like, oh, we're giving you so much notice, for example, but we don't know what's going to be happening in two months with COVID. Right. Yeah. And like, we've just proved that we can do our job perfectly well from home for two years. I mean, what's the point, but who's to argue we're thankful for that job. So exactly. Exactly. I mean, Mm -hmm. I, I would like to argue, but (laughs) it's not my job. (laughs) Right. So fair enough. Fair enough. Do you find yourself stepping down to a coffee shop very often? Not as much as I should. You know, I think I, you know, mentioned before, I'm a single girl. I should be getting out of my four walls. <laughs> so I'm visible to other people in this <laughs> world. Um, so not as much. I am not a go to Starbucks, work on my computer sort of gal. There is a Starbucks literally a block and a half from my place. Um, but literally every time I walk by, I'm like, hmm, you should go there sometime and get a coffee or I actually, I'm not a coffee drinker, but mm-hmm. you know, get a drink from there. And I like their little pumpkin loaves and work and do emails for an hour. Uh, so one day I'm going to do that. <laughs> There's certain kinds of work that feel more conducive to that kind of environment. I get distracted mm-hmm. from 
just the noises and the conversation when I am in a restaurant, even to have a conversation with a friend in front of me, I usually Mm -hmm. face the wall so that I can't Mm -hmm. see everyone walking around. And so I kind of have to be intentional about that at a coffee shop too. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually do better with earplugs in like, I, like when I used to, when I was going through grad school, I would take Mm -hmm. like literally earplugs back before they had noise canceling, you know, AirPods and stuff. Um, and just shove them in because that then I couldn't hear as much of the ambient conversation. Exactly. And, you know, I think at least the way I find it, I'm sure other people deal with this too, but depending on the work I'm doing. So there are times where work I'm doing, I have on my phone, I pull up a show that I want to watch. Love Island is, you know, on right now. It's a nice trashy show that I can have on when I'm doing mindless work. But then there's times where I'm like, okay, I got to read something or I have to write something. And I'm like, I can't have any words anywhere speaking or in my ears or other times I've been like podcast it up or watch a video I've been meaning Mm -hmm. to watch about some business thing, you know, but then there's just times where I'm like, I can't do it anymore. I just need to be in silence. So, um, you, you and I met on focus mate, which was Mm -hmm. great. I actually met several really cool people that same day. And I was, I had been procrastinating on writing something and I just needed to get it done. And like you were saying earlier, um, sometimes being in a timed session like that shows you how much you get done in 50 minutes. Sometimes I do 25 minutes, depending on if I need to be somewhere, but I prefer the 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, it gives me enough time to kind of get in the zone. But, um, I remember that day I just kept having to do another session, another session, another session to finish. Mm -hmm. And it really did make me realize, wow, I, you know, I guess I'm not making as much per hour (laughs) for this job as I thought I was because it took Mm -hmm. me twice as long as I thought it in my mind, you know, was going to do. Um, Mm -hmm. and every once in a while it takes the extra five or 10 minutes to get in the zone and to turn off distractions. I, I agree. And, you know, after, I don't remember how long you've been on focus mate, but so they originally started with the 50 minute sessions mm-hmm. yeah. and then they came out with the 25 minute sessions, maybe like a year and a half ago, a year ago. Mm-hmm. And that's all I was doing was 25 minute sessions because I felt that I was getting distracted in the 50 minute sessions mm-hmm. and the really succinct time crunch, yeah. like made me work more efficiently, but you now I'm finding Pomodoro method, the, the 25 minute like so reason I yes and no so the only thing that I feel like I strictly follow that has to do with the Pomodoro method is I never work for more than two hours straight so if it's four 25 minute sessions I shouldn't say never I will only do four 25 minute sessions together and then I make myself take a little bit longer break Mm -hmm. um but those 50 minute sessions because there's those 10 minutes in between, sometimes I'll stack those more than two at a time. Yeah. Uh, but it works. And also it's, you know, there are some times where I'm in a 50 minute session and my emails get so out of control. I'm like, I'm going to get through 25 emails. And sometimes it's very easy to get through that because I'll junk, but sometimes I'm like, no, I just need to do a short session and tell myself I'm going to do eight emails and they're the meaty emails or, and I just feel much more accomplished. Mm-hmm. Um, do you find having focus may up distracting at all? Like, do you kind of hide the, the, the fee, the video feed from the other person? I mean, I always mute mm-hmm. so I can't hear them or so they can't hear me. I've had a guy one time, he forgot to mute and he was like, listening to pumping music. And I was like, this is cool music, but wow, I'm distracted. Right. So for better or for worse, and I'm sure that they've improved it. So focus me used to slow down my computer a lot when it mm. was on. And it also could be my computer because I am potentially, we could call it blessed to have the same computer that I um, got from a job in 2015 mm-hmm. and it's still kicking. Mm-hmm. And um, that was one of my tech jobs where they ended up laying off a bunch of people and they first offered their computers to the people who were laid off for very cheap, like pretty brand new Mac computers for $300. Wow. And then yes, like so cheap. And I was like, you know what, if you have to lay people off, that's a very humane thing to do because a lot of times people don't have another computer. And then they offered it to the people who are still employed. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to buy this. And I ended up buying two. When I left, I bought my computer as well. I'm like, I sold one of them, but my computer is old. So I'm like, okay, focus mate, my 
it might be my computer. It could be focus me. So what I ended up doing is part of the reason I got the iPad mini was so I could pull up focus me on Safari on uh-huh. my iPad mini. And it sits on a little, um, have like a little, uh, vase. Yeah. That's also like a computer st- or a phone stand. Cool. So it like sits right there and I always mute. And sometimes if someone, because I'm always usually playing something else. If someone forgets to mute, I'll just put the volume all the way yeah, down. Because you have two and devices then, and you can. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then maybe I'll like play a podcast. So it just like zooms or drones it out. Mm-hmm. But I can see why it would be distracting um, to some people. And I think also it just depends on your mindset because I think there are a lot of people who use Focusmate for a f- variety of different reasons. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people are using it because they what is the correct term? I I think it's struggling with like executive function. You know, maybe they have anxiety of depression, which, you know, I deal with that as well. And sometimes literally I'm on a focus mate with someone who's like, I need to brush my teeth. And I'm like, cool. And sometimes people are like, "Are, are you okay? If I'm not on the screen, I'm like, honestly, for me, I just need to know that someone else is depending on my butt being in this chair. Mm -hmm. You go do whatever the heck you want. I'm going to have to account for what I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And honestly, and I don't know if it's my focus mate or not. I have had two sessions over the last maybe 48 hours that were longer sessions and like 15 minutes before the end, the person like left. That happened to me too. Yeah. And I was like, maybe it's a focus mate thing, but it hasn't happened on all my stuff. And maybe they're just having internet issues and it's a coincidence, mm-hmm. you know, or maybe it's me. I don't know. Uh, but honestly, like one of the times I was like, well, they're not here. I'm leaving. <laughs> like, so that's why I was like, I just need to know that someone's going to be there at the end being like, Sabrina, how'd it go? Yeah. When I had someone, um, just disappear on me one day with about 15 minutes to go, I messaged them. And cause I found out there's a way that you can message people. You can like click on a little, I don't know, like there's, profile there's thing. buttons and that you can push on and find a way to message. And I was like, just wanted to check. Did you finish your, you know, goals or whatever? So and she's nice. like, oh, my device died. And I just oh. couldn't get it back on time. And I was like, cool. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Everyone as I have to say, you know, because obviously we just said some things that weren't so great about focus me, everyone in the focus me community that I have communicated with has been fantastic, super positive, you know, at least I'm always thanking someone for being there because there are times where people don't show up. And someone the other day who had like five sessions, she's like, Oh, everyone's just so nice. I'm like, yeah, it is a really nice and supportive community. And Mm -hmm. I think at this point, I think I hit a thousand sessions like last week or something, or maybe it was this week. And I'm like, wow, a thousand people have helped me out, you know, to get stuff done. And there was a one woman, uh, I think Casey is her name. And she was working on, I think it was her dissertation. And she's like, Hey, like, I liked working with you. Here's my link to my schedule. Just like book with me whenever you want. And we were like, just working together pretty often until her dissertation was submitted. That's awesome. You know, and I was doing very different. Like I was like making TikToks (laughs) on it and she was writing her dissertation, but we were there to support each other. And she Mm -hmm. likes my TikToks here and there. And I'm like, Oh, like kind of like an internet friend, which is nice. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And I've met people from all around the world too. So it's really cool. Cause sometimes I'm working at 2 AM and it's bright, you know, in the daytime, wherever they are. And it's fun to just say, Hey, where are you working from? Exactly. I ran into someone last week, I think, and it was, I think like nine o'clock here. And you could tell just like the sun was like streaming in and they're like, Oh, I'm getting my day started. I'm like, are you in Australia? And she's like, yeah. How do you know? I'm like, Cause it's not that bright here. And <laughs> exactly. I was like, I was like, wow. And you said you're getting your day started. So yeah. it's just nice to have all sorts of people. And the other thing I just think is so cool about focus me is that they keep the price so low. And at first I'm like, wow, why is it only $5 a month to be, be like, I think they call it turbo. And then I read someplace or someone explained to me, they're like, it's for people all over the world. $5 in some parts of the world is not the same as $5 in the U S like, that's so true. Wow. It is so thoughtful and just, it just speaks to the people that right. the founders are. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. And it's just, 
I think I originally heard about Focus Mate on a podcast called Side Hustle School. And if anyone's wanting to work from home or build their own something, highly, highly recommend the podcast. It's super short. It's usually like between seven and nine minutes every day. I don't even know how many podcasts they've done, but I think they've been around for like five years. And the man who um, is the host, his name is Chris Gillibo. Have you ever heard of him? No, but it sounds awesome. Yeah, he is. Um, I would like, he just has always lived his life differently. Uh, he has a book called The Art of Nonconformity. And mm-hmm. he, you know, used to do reselling on, I think, eBay. And now he has this whole community of, making side hustles and people just share their stories of how they made a side hustle. And this was one of the side hustles Wow! and it came up because I think the founders are called Taylor and Nate. They were doing a zoom together. They would just get on zoom together and work together. And then they realized it's needed and it's so needed. And sometimes people are paying like hundreds of dollars a month to be in groups to do this. Yeah. And they're doing it for $5 a month. Um, so, and I've, met a ton of people that work from home. Sometimes I, you know, converse and sometimes I'm like, thanks. Yeah. Bye. You know, just we're yeah. both out and you can kind of feel it, you know, like if someone looks like they're going to be, you know, talkative, like we might talk mm-hmm. for five minutes. I think you and I just chatted for like five minutes or so. Yeah. Um, and other people are just like, thanks. Bye. Um, yeah. but I like it that there's a little bit of flexi- flexibility with that, that you're only expected mm-hmm. to talk for one minute, you know, mm-hmm. on, the, on either end of your call. And then, you know, you could talk longer. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. I think I found it just because I was searching for productivity tools and accountability mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. both. <laughs> mm-hmm. It is, it is. And I just can't say enough great things. I always tell all my friends and maybe my friends think it's weird. I am working with strangers on the internet, but I don't. <laughs> and then, um, the whole $5 thing, everyone is just like, I can't believe this only costs $5. Like so mm-hmm. many people say the value, but I, what I was going to say is that I have seen a lot of people who are working from home, but also in an office setting. Some of them mm-hmm. are, um, you know, on mute only they, they can't, they can't chat, uh-huh. but they can type mm-hmm. and, you know, you just feel it out. Um, yeah. and it's still worth it. And I had to do that one day too. Cause my um, kid was literally screaming next to me. Um, oh. she was mad because it, it the swimming suit that she ordered online wasn't what she expected and now she loves it and she's very proud of it but the first two days that we had it she couldn't handle it and was well, literally to the real world and I'm like honey <laughs> I'm in a meeting and so I just told the guy I'm like I'm sorry I can't talk <laughs> yeah right oh gosh yeah well um Sabrina what tips and tricks do you have for someone that might be working from home for the first time that is a great question. Honestly, I think fi- you have to find what works for you. I, you know, I mentioned before, I have anxiety and depression and sometimes days are really great. And some di- days are really not great. I have, I nap a lot and my friends like make fun of me. They're like, Oh, how can you nap in the middle of the day? I'm like, cause I can do whatever I want. But that's part of the reason I use focus me because I need, again, like even this morning, I got really tired in the middle of the morning and I was thinking, myself, no, I have all this stuff to do. And I'm like, well, you're on a focus mate. You can't leave the desk anyway. Like just yeah. do the work. And that's what I need. There might be people who have way better willpower than I do who don't need that. So you just have to find what works for you and experiment. And maybe it's not about something like focus mate. Maybe it's just about where you are working. So again, like when I was like light bulb moment, let's make a dedicated workspace. I feel so much better about that. Cause then when I'm sitting on my couch, I don't see my whole setup or when I want to eat dinner, it's not on my kitchen table. Or maybe you really thrive and work in Starbucks. I think my, my point here is, is do experiments. What worked for you when you were in a open office floor plan might not work for everyone else or work for you when you're at home. Right. And there are like, again, also get the tools. Don't expect that you're going to work from home from just your laptop. If it works for you, great. I can't remember the last time I was in an office setting and I was productive and I just had my laptop. Mm. Actually, I, I don't think that ever happened. Yeah. Well, it's more that people think that it's going just fine. And then three months later, they start to get headaches and mm-hmm. back pain and it's usually good to make sure you have some good tools. I 
remember times during COVID where I was still working out here. My hips were killing me. It's because I was sitting at a dining room table chair Mm -hmm. for like hours and hours and hours. Get, you know, get a real chair. Obviously funds, you need money to do that. And I understand like if you're starting your own business, it might not be readily available, but maybe something to prioritize. And if it's bookkeeping tip, it's for your office, for your business, that would be a tax deduction. Yep. (laughs) So. Thank you so much, Sabrina. Do you have any final thoughts before we head out? No, I really enjoyed our conversation. I'm so glad that we met on Focus Me and I hope, I hope something in here has inspired or helped someone else. I think so. I think just knowing that not one size fits all, right? Like you were saying, like no, figure out what works for yourself is really good. Cause I think people are like, oh, when you work from home, you should do this and that on the other thing. And that worked for me. Well, try it out, but maybe something else will work. Depends right. on personality and, and situation and your housing situation and your family relationship situation. Right. And also, like you said, your situ- even your situation at work. I think I saw something on Instagram the other day where someone like screenshotted. I don't, I've never used Microsoft Teams, but they screenshotted their Microsoft Teams and was like, last Friday, my boss bothered me for three and a half hours on Microsoft Teams. Is this normal? I'm going to venture to say the answer to that. No, but you know, some people work from home, but don't necessarily have the same freedom as other people who work from home. So it all depends. Oh yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of things, you know, people that are tracking, like, um, some people love it and some people hate it. I will say that, Mm -hmm. you know, like the, the, the screen capture where every like one minute they take a screen capture of what you're working on so that, you know, your boss knows exactly what you were doing. And if you were screwing around or whatever, um, And, you know, accountability and autonomy, you know, are two different things. So (laughs) Mm -hmm. here's the thing I've recently, you know, you asked me about time tracking way before I recently have tested out something called time bro, which they need to rename it, but it tracks where I am on my computer when, so I don't actually have to push a button. Mm -hmm. I think that's great for this, the screenshots. That's cool. But I would never want someone to be like screenshot boss. Here it is. Also as someone who does manage other people, where do you have the time to go through those? Yeah. It's just more a fear tactic in some ways. Yeah. Agree. Agree. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Sabrina. No problem. (laughs) Sorry. I hope I didn't chat too much. No, I love it. This is my jam. So, um, sometimes we go 45 minutes. Sometimes we go an hour and a half an hour or an hour and a half. I mean, so yeah. All right. Well, splice it however you want. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been Sabrina St. Peter and April Malone with the SA Work From Home, and we will see you next time. Thanks so much. Awesome. Bye, guys.